Hello YouTube, it's me John Avenger once again and welcome to another review of movies that are praised or misunderstood and this is a misunderstood movie. It did get some praise back in 2008 but a lot of people give it flack and I'm going to tell you right now it is not that bad. I don't have the film on DVD anymore, I sold it because I had a single disc release. I want to get the uh, special edition on Blu-ray but that is Indiana Jones and the King uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Now I saw this movie in the theater back in May of, 20, of 2008. I enjoyed myself. I didn't hate the film. I had some problems with it, but it wasn't like what the problems that everybody else had. But I'll get to that. It was entertaining. It was just as entertaining as the sequels, Temple of Doom and Last Crusade. Not as good as Raiders, but it still was good on its own. Mer good things. Harrison Ford is still in the film, and he doesn't die. Screw you, Abrams. And Harrison Ford's, a, a, you know, dumb idea to kill off his character. Two... They did something different with the movie. Instead of doing another thing with Nazis, like in Last Crusade, they did Russians in the 1950s. It has aliens. So what? It was 1957 around, or 58. Don't correct me in the comic section, please, because I know my friends do that a lot. I make mistakes. YouTube, we have to learn from our mistakes. But it takes place in the 50s. Indy's older. And uh, and then he meets Shia LaBeouf on a motorcycle like a... Uh, like freaking uh, in Rebel Without a Cause, and he, he's Mutt Williams, and yes, there will be spoilers here, so be warned, I'm going to spoil the movie if you haven't seen it, which I think everybody has. Uh, Mutt Williams is his son, and unlike Kylo Ren in The Force Awakens, Mutt doesn't kill his father. Oh my god, George Lucas didn't do that, and yet freaking J.J. Abrams did. Again, take this and shove it, you and the writers. This movie is better. You know why? It's a continuation of Last Crusade. It's not a freaking rehash of Raiders. It has a lot of references to the original without beating it over your head. It has a score. It has pictures of, of, of freaking Marcus from the original Raiders. And has a picture of Indy's father. That's all you needed. You didn't need... Oh, remember this from the first movie? No, it doesn't have that. Indy still swings on a freaking rope. With his whip. Just like in the original films. It looks great. The special effects look fantastic. I know the CGI, yes. There's too much CGI in the movie. I agree with that. The the gophers in the beginning, it's it's very short. It's not too much. And the monkeys, yes, it's ridiculous. But Shia LaBeouf did the Transformers sequels. I think we've suffered through more. Okay? Transformers 2 and 3 are way worse than this. And they're like three hours long. It, he's swinging through trees like Tarzan. Yeah, it's ridiculous, but I can watch it. Even the stupid things in this movie are better than anything in TFA and Rogue One. Rogue One bored me to death. This didn't. Karen Allen comes back. She's just as beautiful as she was in the 80s. Still has chemistry with Harrison. They get married at the end. They've put a closing chapter on that love lo of love story that went somewhere. Because in, in Temple of Doom, he had Willie Scott. And then in the third one, he had some freaking Elsa. No, not Elsa from Frozen. Some blonde chick-headed freaking Aussie. Uh, Austrian chick in the in the movie that kisses him and then portrays him. Yeah, didn't see that coming. But anyway, um, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Yeah, the negatives. I don't think Ray Winstone was needed in the movie as Doc. I think he's just he plays both for both teams. First he's with Indy, then they get captured with by the Russians, and then he's with them. And it's like, oh, Jonesy. Yeah, yeah. I'm like. Get out of my face, Rhys Winstone. You're not a bad actor. You're just, you're not needed in this movie. You're a filler character. John Hurt, rest in peace. I know, I miss him. He was also a character that's kind of like, he's nuts. And then at the end, he's like, oh, I've seen that before. And I'm like, yeah, that was kind of not needed either. The Russians as the villains, they're kind of forgettable. Kate Blanchett's fine. I think she's beautiful in the movie with her black hair, with the wig that she wears. Her accent's fine. I don't, I don't mind her. And what happens to her at the end with the aliens is fine. The film has memorable lines in it, like, come, come here, genius, and I like that. That's better than anything in TFA, or you go, we are going to find it, and uh, also, you know, it's like, grab the, grab the snake, or grab the rope, you know, that was funny, and it's like, damn, I thought that was a lot closer. See, Harrison is actually alive in the movie. He's not sucked, his, his soul got sucked out by J.J. Abrams, because Abrams had nothing to do with this. People give Lucas a lot of flack for this movie. It doesn't deserve it. It's a good sequel. 
It's not a reboot or rehash or freaking Fembusters where they ignore the first two movies and they're like, like we're going to do our own thing, but we're going to make it sexist and unfunny and just constantly beat you over the head. Beat you over the head with your freaking nostalgia. I said to Hollywood, take your nostalgia and shove it. I'm not seeing Spider-Man Homecoming for nostalgia. I'm seeing it because I need a good movie. And people complaining about that movie being that it's going to be bad, shut up. Just shut your face. There's a seat. It's a movie we need after the amazing films destroyed me in 2012 and 2014. But anyway, back to Indy. Like I said, those are the problems. The refrigerator scene, it's stupid.